I'm a fan of blood and guts. Gore, essentially. It's one of the reasons I'm making the movie I currently am. But why do I like gore-graphic imagery? Well, it's because, like all things film-related, I find it to be a tool. Be it the gore from Suspiria being vibrant and over-the-top, or the gritty realism from Cannibal Holocaust, or anything by director Sam Peckinpah, or the simple excessiveness of a Lucio Fulci or George Romero flick. All these use it as a tool to help sell the given story they are being told, be it gore we're forced to watch, or gore we experience viscerally to simulate reality. It can even be done so far to an extreme it becomes comical. Look at the early works of Peter Jackson or even Sam Raimi's The Evil Dead movies. Uh, loads of gross gore that is so ridiculous you laugh your ass off. It pushes what is supposed to be gross and disturbing so far you, you laugh. Now how does this topic pertain to Godzilla? Well, it is actually an interesting bit of history. Eiji Tsuburaya went on record multiple times for saying gore should not be in his kaiju flicks. In fact, by the 1960s, Tsuburaya was actively moving to make his films less realistic and more fantastical, especially with the help of writer Shinichi Sekizawa. Tsuburaya marketed for children, and children didn't like gore. So they thought. The fact that we see Anguirus bleeding at all in Godzilla Raids Again was basically an exception. Look at the flicks Tsuburaya was the special effects director for, in terms of his kaiju film, and you'll find his monster fights have little in terms of actual bloodshed-gore. Even look at Kong ripping Gorosaurus's jaw. There's no blood there, it's foam. Things like that. This is one reason why director Noriaki Yuasa actively made his Gamera films often ridiculously gory. His film Gamma vs. Guiron had the first true dismemberment scene I had ever seen in a film. I look at it now and I laugh, but when I was a kid, that was horrifying. Gore did not really start appearing in Godzilla films until Tsuburaya had died. Even when Sadamasa Arakawa took over, quite frankly, Arakawa was an avid disciple of Tsuburaya, to the point he too refused to show much for gore in his Godzilla film. It wasn't until Arikawa quit and Teriyushu Nakano took over that we started seeing more actual gore, be it Hedorah's eye getting poked out, Godzilla getting his shoulder sliced samurai style, Anguirus getting his jaw ripped open, a nice reference to Godzilla Raids again, by the way, and then Godzilla turning into a literal blood sprinkler in the same movie. But Nakano always explained how much he did not like how silly Godzilla had to become. So of course, he'd like some gore in his flicks. And quite frankly, I actually agree with him. When I was a kid seeing Godzilla, the king of the monsters, bleed, it made me worried. It made me scared that my Godzilla was going to lose. It made me care. And yet the blood used in both Gigan and Mechagodzilla specifically was nothing totally out of the ordinary for Japan at the time. The blood is cartoonishly red, it sprays everywhere, and it's not overly realistic. But it never was supposed to be. You see, Japan always has a tendency to over-exaggerate blood in a way similar to something you'd see in a Dario Argento film. Even Kurosawa did this with Sanjuro, or my favorite example being in Ron, made in 1985. It's like someone just shot Fruit Punch out of a hose, and that's honestly pretty cool. Japan has always had a thing for stylized. Things being stylized, that is. Anything, really. David Callet brought this up in his audio commentary for Ghidra the Three-Headed Monster. Kenji Fukusaku fired the American special effects on uh, the big film Virus, made in 1980. That's a giant mess of a film. Because he said, oh my god, these, these effects are too realistic. I think that says it all in terms of what Japan was looking for in terms of their tokusatsu, their, their science fiction, pretty much anything that they make in terms of film. So to go back to audience members caring, sorry to go on that tangent, look at the Heisei Godzilla films. The Heisei Godzilla films do something very similar to what Teruyoshi Nakano was doing for the Showa era films in terms of their gore, though for a while they made Godzilla's blood yellow. To be honest, I never cared for that. 
it made no biological sense to me. Well, granted, I'm watching a movie about a giant radioactive upright dinosaur. Adam, what realism do you really want? I preferred the decision to switch Godzilla's blood back to red when Takeo Okawara took over in 1992. But they still kept the gore to an utter minimum, using it as a tool to make us worried about Godzilla. If we see him hurt, we know he can lose or even die. Like what was supposed to happen in Mechagodzilla 2. Seeing Godzilla Jr., for example, being killed by Destroya really makes us sad and very scared. It makes us care. So, the use of Gar in Godzilla is used for the same reasons I stated at the beginning. It's used as a tool. And that is my stance on gore in a Godzilla flick in general, as well as any movie, really. Is the Godzilla movie supposed to be an over-the-top, kind of campy, silly film? Go all out and use the gore as such. Do you want something serious and brooding? Use the more realistic types of blood and gore and so on and so forth. Either way is perfectly fine, as long as the person making the decisions here knows what they are doing and why. If they do, chances are, so will the audience. However, I've seen many fan art, many a fan art, depicting things that I think simply go too far. Dismemberment, limps being ripped off, things like this. And I basically approach it like I'm about to say. Sometimes the artist is so concerned with pushing shock value, and this isn't just paintings, I mean film anything, not just necessarily Godzilla either. It becomes silly, as for reasons I've stated above. You become so concerned about being visceral and gory and violent that it honestly pushes that boundary and becomes funny. And with Godzilla, I hate to say this, but it's tenfold. Godzilla isn't exactly a word, or a name, I should say, that inspires a lot of faith, thanks to a lot of the stupidity of film critics and film historians who casually write these off all these films off as utter garbage, when really they're actually wonderful works of art. I was told by a former friend that he wants in his fan fiction, yeah, I read fan fiction, I've been writing my own, what do you expect? For Kong to rip out a rib from Godzilla, and to watch as Godzilla regenerates. I think that was too much personally, and I think it looks silly. However, then I came to re the realization that we wouldn't be seeing this on screen. We'd be reading it in a piece of paper or a computer screen. You see, what I love about books is that they leave the imagery completely up to you. You read it, you picture it however you want. I often picture it play out like a film. Is it a low angle? Is it a high angle? Is the shot moving? Is it a dolly or a pan? That's how I picture things when I listen or read a novel. Because of this, I've subscribed to the theory that what can be left to the imagination is often more effective than what is actually seen. Thus, more extensive gore in a book is more effective than more extensive gore in a movie. Kind of a limb there, but hear me out. I've written gore into my Godzilla saga, the Godzilla series I've been working on forever. You can like it in the link is in the description below, plug, plug. I'm not high and mighty or higher than thou in any stretch of the imagination. I, I like writing and playing and experimenting, and quite frankly, the Godzilla saga has kind of become my playground in this realm. I have bones being broken, Godzilla's atomic breath slicing through another monster, or Godzilla himself bleed out from wounds sustained in battle. I even go further when describing action scenes pertaining to our human protagonists. When someone gets shot, I describe them getting shot. I describe the blood, the gore, the, the breaking of bones and such. Yet I also know that if by some miracle I were to ever make these into films, I'd tone it down. I'd still have blood for Godzilla's wounds, or use a nice squib when someone gets shot. But the point is that I don't need to devote five minutes of screen time to Godzilla bleeding. While in a book I can describe the scene however much I want making it faster or slower at my whim. And there you have it. The true difference between a movie and a book. It can take 10 pages to describe something in a book, while it can only take 10 seconds for it to be shown on film. Thus, a book can seem gorier than a film, when really it's not. It's just the natural order of the two mediums. Or not. Go ahead and pull a Lucio Fulci and spend 10 minutes on Godzilla getting a rib ripped out. 
That should be fun. This sort of reminds me of Evangelion. Oh, God! Here we go. Adam's talking about Evangelion again, right? But hear me out. Anime is nothing but an over-exaggeration of reality, right? Oftentimes, you see people turning into literal blood pinatas or spraying blood everywhere in typical Japanese style. This is something Tarantino would copy in Kill Bill Volume 1. Yet for everything A. Evangelion is known for, it is known for being fucked up and its use of gore. But watch the show again. There really isn't that much gore in the series at all. You do see broken bones, people being shot, the Ava being torn apart, but never is it really over the top. I'd even go on to say that it's the most realistic portrayal of gore I've seen in an anime. And Hideaki Anno did this for a reason. We remember it. He uses it sparingly so we can let it sink in. He does something similar in Shin Godzilla, though this falls more under body horror. Godzilla being inspired by Hedorah and Godzilla evolving and changing, it's disturbing to look at, but it's done sparingly and to a great effect. This is like Texas Chainsaw Massacre. We all know it's a bloody and disgusting film, but there isn't much gore in the film at all, actually. At all. Much less than the Friday the 13th or other 80s slasher fics with large and small budgets alike. But we remember what little there is, be it the disturbing imagery or an actual bit of gore. The one thing from Texas Chainsaw Massacre I think of is the man slicing his hand towards the beginning. It's so raw and visceral, that it makes me cringe. Suppose someone uses gore to the same effect in their Godzilla story. They keep it few and far between. But when it is there, it is disgusting neither in terms of body horror, blood, or anything in between. I'm all for this. And again, it all comes down to what type of film is being made. Is it silly, fun, and campy? Or is it serious, brooding, and trying to reach a level of realism? Those are the factors. I always consider when looking at gore, not just in a Godzilla flick, but any film or book I, I've read or watched, period. And ultimately, that's what this whole topic comes down to. It just depends on what story is being told and how. Go on Facebook, like AM Productions, for all up-to-date information of what we're doing. Follow us on Twitter. All the links are in the description below. And in the end, this is Adam Noyce of AM Productions saying... That was a burp. Sorry, how to hear that. <laughs>